Welcome to As I Live and Grieve, a podcast that tells the truth about how hard this is. We're glad you joined us today. We know how hard it is to lose someone you love and how well-intentioned friends and family try so hard to comfort us. We created this podcast to provide you with comfort, knowledge, and support. We are grief advocates, not professionals, not licensed therapists. We are you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back again to another episode of As I Live in Grief. We've covered so much ground in these two plus years. We have another great guest for you today. With me today is Cindy Burns, and she is a death doula and a coach. I will let her give you a little more of her background. Cindy, your turn. Tell us a little about yourself. Hi, Kathy. Thank you for having me. Um, I am a widow of almost 12 years. My husband died on August 2nd, 2011, exactly 10 years to the day after my father died. So I only have that one date to remember. (laughs) And so I said, I think my husband did it on purpose because I'm terrible with dates. Mm -hmm. We had been married exactly one month shy of 33 years. And we raised six wonderful sons. I did not lean on my sons after he died. I felt that they were grieving and I didn't want them to worry about me. So I kind of grieved alone. And come to find out, that's not the way to do it. Right. (laughs) And a couple years later, it all came back and then some. And part of what it was was that I didn't allow myself to feel my feelings, and I tried to do it alone. So those were two strikes against me. What I was feeling at the moment, though, was I felt lost. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know what my purpose was anymore because I wasn't a full-time mother and I wasn't a wife. So what was I? (laughs) I didn't have an identity anymore. And um, I did a couple of years of fits and starts trying to find myself. Like, you know, these, I didn't travel through Europe, backpacking through Europe. To find myself. <laughs> I kind of wish I had, but I finally figured it out when somebody told me about life coaching. And she said, you've raised six sons. You've been a coach all your life, right. which was true. So I took a course, and the course name was Life Purpose Coach. And it helped me realize that my purpose was to help others find their purpose. And it was a couple years after that that somebody convinced me that I could be a grief coach as well, because I'd been through it. Mm -hmm. And in... In that time, my mother had also died. So I lost both my parents and my husband and a couple cousins and aunts. You know, the older we get, the more people we lose, unfortunately. Very true. Very true. Yeah. So she convinced me that I could be a grief coach. So what I've done is I have a free Facebook group where I, where widows and widowers come in and many of them are in active grief Mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful community. They help each other so much. Good. And that I really don't have to do a lot. I mean, I, I do. I comment on every post and I try to help as much as I can. But it's, it's such a great community of people. They're right. so giving. So Good. That's what I do. Good. <laughs> I can appreciate, Cindy, um, how you would feel after a period of time that, You were just kind of lost. You couldn't identify with yourself. And I remember after my husband died, I even had to, I I told my daughter, in fact, that I was redefining myself, that I was starting over again. Thanks for sharing that, Cindy. I know it's very, very difficult to have to redefine yourself in your own grief experience. And once you go through grief after losing someone very special to you, you kind of, well, some people have said you enter a club or, or whatever, whatever they want to call it. 
there's certainly nothing fun about it, but I find that you do have a desire in some aspect to help others because it has been so very painful for you to go through that if you can save others a little bit of stress and anxiety, it's certainly worthwhile. Yeah, nobody can make it completely go no. away, but if you can can ease it by letting them know that they're not alone absolutely and that what they're feeling is normal absolutely now how long has it been since you lost your husband um it will be 12 years in okay. august all right it's been five years for me since i've lost my husband um but i i did also have three other major losses in my life i lost my father first i lost a newborn son and i lost oh. my mother and then more recently my husband. Um, I have found only recently, I will say, that the first three losses in my life, I never fully grieved because that was a a generation, if you will, or a a time in my life where my parents just wanted to protect me from anything harmful and hurtful and sad. So just, you know, stuff it, move on, get over it. So I'm just kind of now fully grieving those losses as well. At any rate, our paths crossed recently on Facebook, and I learned that you are a death doula. Well, actually, I'm a grief, a grief doula. doula. There is okay, a difference. I wanted I... to distinguish that because at first I had only known of doulas uh, for people having babies. Sure. Yep. There, there are end-of-life doulas and death doulas. There are even, um, oh, I can't think of what, but... A plan, end of life planning. Okay. You know, they assist people okay. with the planning. And then a grief doula comes in after all. All that. right. So thank you for correcting and clarifying. So you then are a grief doula. Correct. So you don't really, uh, well, I won't say you don't, but I'm not, I'm not there at the time. Generally, you're not there at the time of death. You're there afterward. Is there a particular point afterward that you kind of enter the scene? Whenever they hear about me, because it is something that is unusual and people haven't heard of it. So it may be weeks, months, years later before they find me. And so it's getting, it's getting better, Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. You know, it's getting better known. But so I I usually call myself a grief coach. Okay. I was just going to ask you, what then is the difference between a grief coach versus a grief doula? Not a whole lot. (laughs) Different certification, that's all. All right. But you are certified as one, both? I'm, I'm certified as a grief doula, not as a grief coach. There are very few grief coaching, um, courses. That's why I went the doula route. Okay. All right. And I'm also a happiness coach. Uh, that's, that sounds fun, actually, being a happiness yes, coach. Yes. I, I really love doing that one. How do people find out about you? Usually through Facebook, through my um, my Facebook group. But a lot of it, too, is word of mouth. You know, friends or family have heard, you know, they know what I do. And they I get so many... You know, oh my, my coworker just lost her husband or whatever, and I they have to approach me. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't go. I'm not an ambulance chaser. Okay, so you don't go out and actively search for people who have lost no. someone and try to convince them to go with you. You go by referrals and. Okay. okay. Correct. And I do, I do podcasts. In fact, I'm starting my own podcast, yeah. which will start next week. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's called the Good Grief Podcast. Oh, isn't there already and a Good Grief Podcast? There is There is Good Grief. Right. Mine, is, mine is called The oh, Good Grief Okay, podcast. all right. Okay, I see. I really wanted to use that name because I do believe that good can come from the seeds of Oh, grief. I agree completely. Nothing, I mean, grief is there's nothing good yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. But the but afterwards right. we can we especially as widows we become resilient, strong, fearless. We get 
so fearless because what's the worst that can happen? It's already yeah, happened. Yeah, I've already gone through the worst, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Now, do you primarily help just widows or do you, does it matter? I started out, I started out just widows. And um, again, I was convinced that men need my help too. So I have, I have one male client yeah. now and there are men in the Facebook okay. group All as right. well. Good, good. And what about, um, you know, parents that lose children or something, or is it pretty much people who've lost partners? The Facebook group is just for widows and I call, I call them the widow. Uh, the widow. That's, that's probably a good yeah. clarification. Yeah. I remember a discussion people about widow versus widower and yeah. Yeah. People, who, people who are widowed, it's not, I don't like saying I am a widow because that's not what defines right. me. Right. But you know, it's people, you, you can't come up with another name. So, but on the good grief podcast, I will be taught. I have talked with um, people who've lost children who have had multiple losses in a very short period of time, who've gone on to do some wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And, and just hearing about how they get through the day. I talked to one woman. She lost her, I think he was two, three-year-old son. Three months later, her husband oh, died. Three years after that, her brother oh. died. I mean, it was very, it was very, very short. And the only way to get through it is to force your, force your way through it and realize that there is a light at the end of the mm -hmm. tunnel and work towards mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Have something that's going to get you out of bed and moving in the morning because otherwise, you know, you're just going to want to stay in bed, pull those covers up over your head and never leave. Right, right. So how do you as a coach then help someone who is really mired in that overwhelming and devastating grief? I let them talk. I'm a completely non-judgmental ear. I'm not related to them. I'm not related to the person they lost. So they can say anything mm -hmm. to me. And it, I think that's very freeing for most right. of them. And I also reassure them that everything they're, they're saying is normal. Mm -hmm. You can't, nobody's grief journey is the same as somebody exactly. else's. But there are certain things that they all have in common. It's just they happen at different times or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um I know for me the one that's the one that surprised me the most and kind of concerned me the most was mm -hmm. anger. I mean I was sitting at my desk working and suddenly I just got so filled with rage. I wanted to break something. Mm -hmm. And that's actually very common, but I did not know it at right. the time. I thought I was going crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I reassure them and like I, I let them talk. And occasionally, occasionally I'll offer some advice. Very often the first emotion that they express is guilt. Mm -hmm. I didn't get them to the doctor in time or they didn't, you know, they took her to the wrong hospital or, you know, they forgot to say I love you that mm -hmm. day. Various things like that. And so I, I help them to learn that guilt does nobody mm -hmm. any good and it only harms right. them. And, and how long do you let them just kind of perseverate on the fact that they're, oh, just emotionally distraught, that they don't feel like moving forward and they're just, they don't want to do anything except sit on the couch all day and watch TV and how long do you let that go on before you try to motivate them otherwise? When they start with me, I, because they have to reach out mm -hmm. to me, they're already on the edge of leaving that okay. couch. You know, they're already, they may not realize it, but they're already moving towards the rest of their right. life because they've kind of acknowledged that they need to do that. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They've acknowledged that they need help getting through the emotions that they're feeling and they're more open to it. So they, 
so they know, you know, it's, they can't live okay. like that forever. All right. And why might someone choose a grief doula as opposed to a therapist? This is in your opinion. I mean, it, there right. is no. Well, some of the people who come to me have gone to oh, a really? therapist. I went to a therapist and I, she was supposedly, um, she had worked with hospice patients in hospice and she was very well versed in grief, but she really didn't help me much oh, at okay. all. I kind of, I kind of figured things out myself. Okay. And a lot of times that's, that's what happens is the people, you know, they, they've tried talking to a therapist who just didn't get it. You know, they've, they haven't lost anybody close to them. So they don't know what, you know, they don't really understand what they're going mm-hmm. through. And so when they find out that, you know, I'm a widow myself, they feel more comfortable. And um, the, the biggest problem is insurance doesn't cover me. It well, covers right, the therapist. Right. And I will refer them back to a medical professional if, if I, in talking to them, I realize that they are in a clinical depression that encompasses their whole life not just the grief you know that they can't see anything good in their life um they're in a clinical depression and they need to speak to a doctor because i know my limitations so part of your training then did to did cover things like that when to tell if someone needs professional help not that you're not a professional but but yes yeah yeah. yeah Yeah. Okay. All right. And I've asked many, many people from therapists to psychiatrists uh, to ministers and beyond many of my guests. Do you feel that grief is or should be a mental health diagnosis? I know it has recently become not grief in itself, Mm -hmm. but a um, component of it. Complicated grief has become um, you know, it's got a DS9. DSM4, de- I think it is. Or... Yeah. Yeah, it's got, it's got a designation. Um, in, the, in the respect that maybe the insurance companies will be more apt to pay for extended therapy for that, or that um, a medical doctor will see it as a mental health issue and be more willing to refer them to somebody other than just a general practitioner. Um, I think it's, it can work. It can be good that way, but it's a part of life. Unless it's become a delayed grief or complicated grief, you know, grief is, affects us right, all. Right, right. We're all, it's part of living. You're going to lose people. And so unless, so in, for the most part, it's not a mental health issue, okay. but it can become okay. one if it's not handled properly. Can you help me then define complicated grief and delayed grief? Delayed grief is basically what I did where I just didn't acknowledge, I, I did grieve. I mean, I cried, but I did it alone. I did it privately. I didn't do it as long as I probably should have. And there are, there are people who don't even cry. They just kind of, they just block the feelings. So then they'll feel it years later, something will come up and they'll just break down and that's delayed grief. Complicated grief is similar to what you went through or um, the other person I had spoken to, where you've got death after death after death, and they just kind of build on each other. Because every time you lose somebody, you're also going through the grief that you went through previously, because it it comes back into your into your mind, you know. When when you're when you're sad over losing your husband, you're naturally going to remember your child that you right. lost, and even if you're not aware of it, it's there. 
And that that can become complicated. Okay, grief. that's kind of an entirely different definition, I think, than I had in mind. But um, oh, thank you for that. So I, I agree completely with what you said, that, that grief is a normal part of life. And at some point, it can become something that you need help with. But I, at that point, I think it may be, my personal opinion, maybe that it's just grief manifesting itself in another form that would require the help um, that might have the mental health diagnosis. That grief yes. itself wouldn't necessarily, but just however it's manifested, whether it's in a clinical depression or anxiety or suicidal thoughts right. or something like that, it would be a yeah. manifestation of, of grief. Okay. Yes. Now, do you, you mentioned your Facebook page and everything. Do you have other events that you host to help people in a group type setting or like a bereavement group or anything? I am trying to build um, a group practice. And because I think that is really the best way for people to heal. But so far, my clients have all wanted to go one on one. All right. so, which is, I mean, that's fine. That's their, that's their uh, prerogative, sure. but group is cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there are many You're groups good. out there that are free, actually. But, yeah. 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 So, with, with me, a group would, would be less expensive, but, well, you know, they, I think they like the anonymity of, you know, just t talking one-on-one. There may be one. that, yeah. Now, do you primarily see people virtually or do you see clients face-to-face? -face? <laughs> Oh, completely online through either Zoom or um, Facebook Messenger has the right. video right, chat. Right. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned your podcast. When does it actually, has it actually launched or? Not yet. Um, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm going to, the plan is for it to launch on Monday. The oh, 15th. okay. Um, I still have some editing to Learn. Oh, how to yeah. <laughs> I've been down that road. <laughs> oh, I'm. I think the first one to air is going to. I've got. I've got quite a Good. few already Good. recorded. I'm going to find the one that leads that needs the least amount of yeah, editing. That'll be <laughs> and we'll go on. Yeah. yeah. But I'm. You know. I'm hoping that it gets the discussion going to. We as a society are so afraid of death that we don't talk about it. We're not taught how to grieve. Children are, no, don't take him to right. the funeral. He's too young. And, and you know, they're not, we're just not, we don't see other people grieving. We don't know how to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. And there's no talk about it. And that definitely needs to be more. I, I couldn't agree more. I Very recently I've heard from more than one person the that entire perspective about how you, you can't tell anymore when someone's grieving generations ago yeah. people would be dressed in black or they would have the black armband and you would see mm -hmm. them on the street and you could go up and say oh i'm so sorry who did you lose and you could support yeah. them in that but it's not like in walmart you can look for whoever's wearing the t-shirt that said i'm grieving it, it doesn't <laughs> happen so we don't know yeah. so there are people out there all everywhere that are grieving something that yeah. we're not able to support because we can't identify them. There is also grief that doesn't entail um, a death. Oh, certainly. Yes. We've talked about that a lot. When somebody loses a job yes. or a career. Yes. That's a grief. Yes, we've talked about um, that. We've talked about death of a pet as well. That yes, maybe yes. Every bit is painful for some people that we just we had one of our she was 17 years old um a cat put down last month and that was hard cuz we had her for since she was like 6 mm -hmm, weeks old mm -hmm. so 17 years is a long yeah, time yeah it is yeah we've had several guests on to talk about pet death and uh with some different ideas we've even had a um a psychic medium who contacts pets in the afterlife oh. and can give you a message from your pet if you're like, yeah, he's fascinating. And and he's very good, too. I will say he's he's very, very good. It, so there is so much around the, the topic of grief. And there seems to be a huge trend 
lately with an increase in podcasts, groups, and everything, books, books and all. What do you have any books that you suggest to your clients? Um, I just just started reading the Grief Recovery Handbook, which was rec- recommended to mm-hmm. me, and I haven't gotten very far okay. in it yet. But so far, it's I mean, it's a twentieth anniversary expanded edition, okay. so it's been around. Who's for a the while. author on that one? Author is. John W. James and Russell Friedman, okay. founders of the Grief Recovery. Oh, Institute. okay. All right. Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm interested because part of what interested me in this particular book is the the idea of grief recovery. Mm-hmm. I don't think we ever recover. Well, I don't think so either. I've said many times on the podcast that I'm going to grieve for the rest of my life. It's going to change shape. It's grief has already become a, an essential part of my life, my day to day routine and activities. I mean, here I am with a podcast that that was, you exactly. know, that was a moment of divine intervention, I think, and just being open to the signs that are put in front of me, like this is what you need to do, Kathy. Um, you know, you have this ability and, and this talent, so you need to do this. And I'm enjoying every episode because I'm enjoying meeting the the guests we have and my network has expanded. And right at this point we have listeners in over 86 countries around the world. So yeah, I mean, who knows where they are and where they're listening, but that all just makes me feel very content that I saw a sign or felt a sign and I followed it. And it has led me here. And obviously there are people that are tuning in and listening and we're helping, you know, they're, they're getting something out of it. So um, absolutely. And I, I wouldn't change anything about it. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. At this point in my life. Yes, that's very true. You know, who knows what tomorrow will be, will bring. And exactly. I try to remain open to that. Um, I'm going to share with you. I recently had the, the distinct pleasure of hearing Dr. Alan Wolfelt speak in person. He was at a local funeral home and he gave us a quote that I promised him I would share at one of my upcoming podcasts. And I think I'll do it today because I think you'll enjoy it as well. He is an incredible speaker and he has, I think he's probably written 80 books. Uh, He's right up there with David Kessler. But his quote that he gave us, and he gave us cards, and it says, quote, The essence of finding meaning in the future is not to forget my past, as I've been told, but instead to embrace my past. For it is listening to the music of the past that I can sing in the present and dance into the future. Unquote. That's in his second edition of The Journey Through Grief. I love, I love that. that entire concept about the past, the present, and the future. So yeah. I invite you, Cindy, to come dance with me into the future. We will do well, that. I, I, <laughs> Good. Our time is winding down. These 30 minutes always go so very fast. And I don't want to forget that you've taken the time out of your schedule and your routine to guest on our podcast. And I appreciate it so very, very much. So I want to turn the microphone over to you at this point and let you speak directly to our listeners, let them know where they can find you, let them know what you have to offer them and just tell them anything you'd like without me interrupting with questions. Well, the two things that I say on every podcast that I guest on feel your feelings. Don't deny your feelings. Allow yourself to feel it. And you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to come to me, but find somebody, a friend, a relative, a religious person in your life, a therapist, another coach, somebody to help you through it if you're having trouble getting through it on your own. That said, I'd love to help you if you need help, if you feel like we resonate with each other. Uh, You can reach me. The best way to reach me is through Facebook Messenger. 
And I'm Cindy Judd, J-U-D-D, Burns on that, because I'm usually way behind on my emails. <laughs> but if you do want to send me an email, it's Cindy at CindyJBurns.com. And my website is CindyJBurns.com. So those are the best ways to reach me. Well, and as always, Cindy's contact information will be part of the podcast notes. And also it will be on our website as well. And failing that, if for some reason you can't reach her, just send me an email like a few people have done, and I will pass your information along to Cindy. Okay, so I guess it's that time now where I need to sign off. I want to remind our listeners to take care of yourselves. And I've kind of converted lately from saying practice self-care to practice self-compassion. Be patient with yourself. Don't judge yourself. You don't want other people to judge you, so don't judge yourself. Give yourself time. If what you need to do is sit by yourself for a little bit, do that. If you need to tell your story, you can tell it to your cat or your dog or your bird. I had the most delightful little parrot for a while, Phoebe, and I would talk to her all day long because it was just Phoebe and I in the house. And she would chirp along now and then or nibble at my finger or something like that to let me know she was listening. But just practice that self-compassion. That is the greatest form of self-care you can find. Also, find other people. Don't isolate yourself, but get out there. Find them. It doesn't have to be a grief group or a bereavement group. Get out there. Walk them all. When you're in line at the grocery store, Look at the person ahead of you. Find something you like. Just say out loud, I love those shoes. Or talk to a child. Usually children. Usually children will respond with a smile, a giggle, or they'll hide their head. But those type of interactions can do so much to just let you know that you are not alone. That this is part of life that you're going through. And... It may never pass, but it will get a little better. It will get a little easier to bear. So until next week, everyone, again, remember what I said, self-compassion. Catch me again next time as we all continue to live and grieve. Thank you so much for listening with us today. Do you have a topic that you'd like us to cover or do you have a question from one of our episodes? please email us at info at asiliveandgrieve.com and let us know. We hope you will find a moment to leave a review, send an email, and share with others. Join us next time as we continue to live and grieve together.